So the green rock worm is actually a green caddis larva. Um, it's been around a long time. The, the credit for it goes to a barber from Montana whose name was Franz Pott. Um, and he invented this pattern in the 1920s. And if you search green rockworm online, you're gonna find a million different ways to tie this thing. Um, it's pretty simple, it's a pretty easy tie, but there's like everything else, a lot of varieties to it. And what it's really trying to do is imitate many different species of caddisflies. Um, and actually even up in the driftless, there are chartreuse caddisflies, um, but there are many different caddis that sort of look like this, and that's what it's trying to, that's what it's trying to imitate. So we're gonna get at it. So you can tell it's a bead head. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a bead head on the fly. Um, and for this pattern, it calls for a black or black nickel. Sometimes it's easier to get black nickel um, bead head so that there's not so much contrasting color and it looks, and it looks um, natural. I use um, tungsten beads and I really like them. They are a bit pricey. They do get a little expensive, but if you go online and you tie enough of these and you buy them in bulk, you can buy like, you know, 250 or 500 of these. That really brings the price down. But I really believe tungsten um, for a fly that doesn't have an underbody weight, it gets it down there um, to the depth that you need to get it. So I like, I like tungsten. I'm gonna, for some of you out there, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the bead on the hook right now. And many of you may be familiar with this, but there actually is a little tool. Um, it's a bead, a little bead pliers. You can see in here that it has a little, um, a little depression on the end of the tire, on the end of the tool that allows you to pick up beads kind of see it in that for you. So you can see the little depression. So I can just go in and pick up that bead in the little depression and put it right on the hook. Another little tip for bead heads is, I think I learned this from Doc when I first learned tying flies, is you can put your hook in the vise Debarb the hook, if you will, for two reasons. It's easier on the fish and it makes it easier to put a bead head on. And you can, you can put the, the hook in your vise that way and then simply pick up your bead in your little tool. You can do this by hand too. But you can see you can just simply drop that right on your hook. And then take your hook out of your vise and slide it back in. So that's a neat little tip, I think, um, to get the bead on because sometimes some of us with fatter fingers or less dexterity, et cetera, et cetera, are dropping the bead and trying to get it in. Um, so we've got the bead on the hook. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, put the thread on. I'm gonna use black, just black thread. Just some black unithread, eight aught or six aught or any size you want to tie. With this fly, you're not really worried about bulk too much because you want to get this thing down. I'm a big fan of as small as you could go. Like I would tie this fly in, um, I would tie this fly with 14 aught thread if I could. I also forgot to mention the hook that we're tying it on is a curved scud or shrimp hook. Any curved wet fly hook works for this fly, any single one. Um, I tie them in 14s, 16s, and 18s. I almost always fish them in 16s. I'm a big believer in small. It's just a confidence thing for me, but 14s will work just fine. 18s work just fine, but they get a little harder to tie and, and to tie your tippet on. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the 16 zone, but again, you know, any curved heavy uh, nymph hook works. I think this is um, 2X heavy. Yep, 2X heavy, 1X short. The only thing that you have to watch out for ever in tying these flies 
with the bead head is that if you're tying them on really small sizes, um, sometimes you can get it where your, your bead head actually is obstructing the hook point when you're getting really small with the hook. So if you are tying these in 18s or even smaller, just watch that, watch that you don't, you know, obscure the gap of your hook and block up the hook sets. But on this, on this size 14, it's working just right. So I'm gonna take my ADOP thread and just going to put it on the hook, trim it off, and we're ready to go. Denton, do we have any questions at this point? No, we've okay. got a comment from Steve that he likes the magnification and I think the picture's looking really nice on our end. Yeah, let Look. us know how that's going. We really want to hear your feedback if it's working for you. You might tell the guys how to wave or post on chat so they can, everybody knows you can get questions in there. Good point, Lanning. Um, Denton, you want to feel that one? Yeah, on the bottom of the screen, when you're looking at Dan, if you move your mouse over the screen on the bottom, you'll have icons show up. And in the middle, there is a chat icon. And if you click on that, you can bring up and you can select, it defaults to everyone, but you can select individuals to talk to. Um, but if you post your questions just to everyone, then everyone can see what the questions are and we'll take breaks once in a while and answer them. There I go. Cool. So this fly has a rib in it. The rib is, is tied really small. It's, it's mostly to provide a little bit of segmentation and a little bit of flash. It's not gonna do much for you on the weight, but it gives it that segmented body and just a little bit of flash. I use silver wire, extra small, but again, substitute what you have. I've tied it with large, silver wire large. Like it really, it really doesn't matter. You know, unless you're tying this thing really teeny. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie it on extra small and we're gonna put the rib in. And I like to put the rib in at this stage as opposed to coming to the back of the fly and bringing it on. So I just take this little piece of silver wire. It's looking a little gold on my screen, but it's silver. And I like to tie it in right at the front of the fly on the far side of the hook and bind it down all the way back. This way it just won't ever come out when you're tying it or fishing it or whatever. It just binds it down. And I just get it all the way back. I come way down. One of the things I didn't mention is I like to have the hook in the vise um, near the bottom of the bend so that you can have a lot of this curved, um, curved portion of the hook so that your fly looks a little bit curved. And I'll bring it right down on top of my vise like that. So that's getting the rib in. Any questions, Denton, from anyone? No, we're looking good. Okay. So the next material we're gonna put on is, is the body of the fly. And this is bright chartreuse dubbing. I have hairline insect green here, but any kind of bright green dubbing. Now there are, um, Caddis larva in many streams, you'd be surprised that are this bright green color. And I have not seen them for real in a driftless stream. I've never seen a bright green um, caddis larva. I've been told they're there, but the fish love them. <laughs> so they must either see them a lot and like them or it doesn't matter to them. So find some nice chartreuse, bright green dubbing. Now for this, got a little patch of the dubbing here. I do like to taper this fly. So as I'm dubbing the fly, I am going to just take a really little bit of this green dubbing to start with. I mean, just a smidgen, see that? You can barely see the fiber. So when I first put it on, I'm really just painting Just painting the thread with it. 
very, very thin. As I continue to dub the fly, I'll put a little more on, to get it thicker and thicker. So I'm dubbing it here. But if you don't get your dubbing exactly tapered, you can also taper it by going over spots. Sometimes I do that as well. So I'll just be putting some dubbing on. I've got, right now I've probably got about four or five inches of dubbing. And then as you can see, as I get near the end, it starts to get thicker and thicker. So very thin near the tie-in point and increasingly thicker. And then I just start wrapping the green dubbing. Get one wrap around. I try not to overlap that much to the back of the fly so I get my nice thin part toward the back. And I just keep bringing it forward. As I get a little farther, I'm to about the barb of the hook. And then I'll start overlapping a little bit. And if I don't have it tapered perfectly on my thread, like right here, I have a little thin spot on my dubbing, then I'll just go over the same spot a couple of times to start to achieve that taper. When you get really good at this and you're tying a bunch of them, I tied a bunch of these this, uh, this uh, winter. Um, you really get a good handle for how to get that dubbing on perfectly so you don't do any overlapping. You can just get that taper on really nicely. I haven't tied this in a while, so I'm doing some overlapping, but it works just as fine. If, like I have here, you get it too thick, a little thicker, I just touch my um, fingers to my lips to get a little saliva, and I just spin that on there. So it's not too thick. And then I'm gonna bring it about a hook gap behind, a hook gap between the bead and the end of the chartreuse body. So there's a little bit of spots there. That's what we're gonna fill in with black dubbing. So any questions now, Denton, at this stage? No, I think everybody's still with you. All right, should I keep going or are people tying along? I see thumbs up, thumbs, thumbs up. up. Anybody need a break for a second? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. I, think, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So the next part of the fly is to take your thin silver wire and you're just gonna wrap this, spiral this through the chartreuse body that you just laid on. camera, just to give it a little segmentation, maybe four segments, five or three. I've never done two, but it would probably work. Then when I get to the front of the body, I'm just going to take one wrap behind it, two wraps behind it, one in front of it, and then you can cut it off if you want, like so. But this wire is so thin, if you just hold it tight and they call it helicoptering it, you just wrap this around a few times, it'll just break off. It's called helicoptering it. So you can see you don't really see that rib too much. It's buried in there, but it's created some nice segments, especially toward the back of the fly. If you get a little dubbing, a little green dubbing in between that gap you've left there, don't worry about it because you want a thicker collar and you want this thing. There's like these fibers that are sticking up. That's all good. Um, this, this bug does darken when it gets wet. So as bright as you see it now is not really as bright as it looks when you're fishing it because as soon as you put it in the water, um, it really gets a bit darker and looks uh, more natural to me. Any questions, Denton? No, you're still doing good. Okay, so the next part is the collar. 
which is black dubbing. I like ice dub because it has some sparkles in it and I, just subtle little sparkles in it. And I think it works really well and it gets spiky and buggy. Um, but you can use any, any black dubbing that you have. I mean, here's some um, Wapsi, just plain old black dubbing. You can use that, like any, any black dubbing that you have. So this is yeah, but the head, part. Yeah, because mine is super, like, I can't even see the head. Um, that would be a little problem. So I'm just going to take a little patch of black dubbing. And you want this to be um, a nice collar, a nice clump at the front of the fly, so it's really easy because you don't have to get like fancy at all. You know how like usually you put too you, you put too much dubbing on a fly, or you really paint it on, like I did at the back of the chartreuse. But this one, you get a nice thick noodle like that, and really you're just wrapping it around till you get nice thick collar and bring it right behind that bead head. And that's about it. Then you just take your old whip finish tool or your hands, whatever you want to do, get that in right behind the bead. Whip finish it. Cut your thread. And that is the Green Rock.